do well for a little bit. And we'll cut these up and I'll show you how to do that a little later when we're ready to eat them. Okay, I got some water boiling back here. Our next course is a, a chicken Florentine course. And it's um, made with chicken breast, fresh spinach, and it has a few other things in it that I'm going to show you. Alrighty. Um, first thing I want to get started on is our potatoes, which I'm serving with the course. I would normally serve a veggie and a potato, but the chicken Florentine has spinach on it, so we'll count that as our vegetable course. New potatoes, these beautiful red little potatoes that you get in the supermarket most of the year round. And I'm not going to be too crafty with these today. I'm just going to dice them into quarters or slice them into quarters. And I'll serve these tossed in a little bit of butter and fresh herbs. You don't want them too big. Um, if they're small, you can quarter them. If they're, they're too big, you can cut them down. This isn't your main course, so you really don't need a lot of these. I'm going to just add these to the boiling water back here. That's out of camera angle at the moment. And cut some of these up. These are going to take a little longer than everything else, so that's why I wanted to get these working before we get our main course started. Okay, I think maybe two more potatoes. You say potato, I say potato. I call them red bliss. It saves you the uh, distinction of potato, potato, but you can ask Dan Quayle if you have any questions on the correct spelling of potato. Okay, I think that'll do it. Again, I got enough for the next day. Potato salad. Uh, the wonder of potatoes. The Irish can tell you more about the uses of potatoes than I can, but it's in my blood, so what can I say? I love potatoes. All right, our next course is chicken, and um, without chicken, I'd be lost because it's probably one of my favorite things to cook with. Um, I don't know how familiar, familiar you are with chicken. It comes on the bone or it comes boneless, it comes whole. You pay a little bit more if they skin the bone off, if they skin the skins off. I can't be bothered doing that. I know how to do it. It just takes a lot of work. I'm just going to pay the extra cents and get boneless chicken breast. Um, but what I do is I do like to trim it up a little bit, and I'll show you that right now. I was actually doing it earlier. My producer said, hold it, hold it. we got to uh, got to show these people what we're doing here. So I stopped trimming, and uh, I got one set aside that I'm going to trim up for you. This one, I trimmed most of the fat and skin off of. There was a little bit of grizzle on there, which is basically the thin tendons that hold the flesh part to the bone and these are boneless most of the chicken will come with a little uh, chicken tender it's a little piece from under the ribs um, nothing wrong with that I'm gonna save this along with some that I saved from this piece and I'm gonna use it on a chicken pizza tomorrow night so let's put that aside I got a plate of little chicken in there what I do is um, we'll move you over this is the one that I didn't clean up yet and kinda spread it out thin like this and if you're watching me at home, you'll see what I'm talking about as far as fat and tendon. It's all along here. It's unsightly. You don't need that. We're going to just cut it right off. Cut it off. Um, some of this stuff, if your knife isn't sharp, you may want, not want to deal with this. But Just cut off anything that looks like you don't want to eat it. If it looks gross, it probably is. Learn that on the schoolyard when I was about nine, but it holds true when it comes to chicken. Also, let me advise you when you're working with chicken, make sure you wash your knives off, your cutting board, and your hands with the raw chicken. I don't need to tell you about that. I'm sure your mother's warned you when you left for college. Either that or you learned it in biology class, but I never took biology, so I had to learn by getting sick from salmonella. It happened to me, it can happen to you. <laughs> All right, we got a thick chicken breast. I just kind of cleaned up all the fat, um, not unlike this one. And what I want to do is pound out these chicken breasts a little bit. Watch this. Don't watch me wash my hands. Watch what I'm about to do. Where would we be without plastic? Well, we'd probably use wax paper, but I don't have any wax paper. So I'm going to take um, some plastic here if I can get it off. It's a beautiful thing about handy wipe handy wrap, you can never get it off the roll. That's why Saran Wrap charges that premium price, you know. I'm going to cover the chicken breast. Why? Because I don't want to get chicken breast meat all over me, all over my counter, all over the ceiling. And I'm going to pound it out a little bit underneath the plastic. I 
use the thin end. I think the big end will kind of mar it up a little bit too much. Uh, if you don't like your neighbors, I suggest doing this portion of the preparation really early in the morning. And when they complain, you can just tell, hey, I was cooking, man. It's kind of either that or look, continually walk up to their door. And who's there? No, just kidding. Okay, so we got one hell pounded out. And I'll flip it over, do the same. I'm not going to do this one because we don't need it for today. Put it aside. All right. Um, we're cooking for two, and if you're a, a hearty eater and you want to um, cook a whole breast for yourself, that's fine. But I really find that, especially if you're doing a lot of different courses, cut back on the meat a little bit and you know have other things, alternatives to eat. Okay, so the chicken breast is off this side. We'll leave that there for a minute. Let me check on these potatoes, give them a little bit of a stir. This guy's not too clean. Give me the old rinse. All right, potatoes cooking. Now, the chicken florentine is your basic chicken breast, sauteed in olive oil with um, some herbs, and it's going to be in an egg batter. What we're going to have on top of it is spinach and a hollandaise sauce. What you need to do is go out and get yourself some spinach next. Um, when you buy spinach, it's going to come like this. It's going to have big stems on it. It's going to be wrinkled up. You need to give it a little attention if you're buying pressed spinach for one important reason. Spinach grows in some of the sandiest soil you'll ever encounter in your life. And the sand sticks to this like iron sticks to a magnet, um, like white is to rice. You really need to give these a good cleaning. Otherwise, you're going to be crunching on sand, and that's not going to make for a very enjoyable experience. What I like to do is fill up the sink about a quarter of the way with ice cold water trim up the spinach as best as I can, break off the stems, and soak it. Move it around my hands, splash it around, and give it a really serious good rinsing. That way you know you're going to get 90% of the sand off. And then um, strain it, rinse it with cold water in a colander again for a second time, and you should be pretty good. What I have here is the same spinach that I had on a low, um, low heat. It's cooking down, if you can see that. Um, still a little crunchy on the top. I turned off the heat. I did not add one drop of water. But if you look, you see that spinach, the, the leaves retain a lot of moisture. And if you do it on a low enough heat, you're not going to need to add anything. So we'll leave it at that. Um, here's our spinach. Just about all the way cooked off. A little bit of water in it from itself. Put that back on the side. Um, let me talk to you a little bit about the sauce that I'm making today. It's a hollandaise sauce. And we're cooking single. We don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to admit to you, no, I didn't make fresh hollandaise sauce. Not that it's difficult. But I'm making the powdered variety because a lot of you people out there don't have the time to separate eggs, clarify butter, melt the butter, add the butter to the eggs, constantly whip it. Who's got time for that? I don't. So what we're going to do is take your basic butter uh, hollandaise packet, um, go to the store, find one that just says hollandaise, and follow the directions. My directions called for a half cup of butter, and got that here. I've already taken the time to melt the butter, but you'll throw in a whole stick of butter or margarine. I'm actually going to cook with margarine today. It's a little bit on the um, low fat side. Yes, I do cook with a little salt, but I try to make up for my um, cooking with using low fat ingredients or um, like chicken breast if there's no fat on it. I'm going to get a bigger pan out here. This one doesn't seem to fit on this portable burner unit that well. That, believe it or not, is one full stick. Alrighty. Well, let that butter warm up a little bit. We're going to bring it to a, a roll. Um, you're not going to be able to see it from this angle, but looking down on it, the butter is pretty much now starting to boil. I have my, my mixture here. Um, it's a powdered mixture for the hollandaise. And you can probably hear that coming along nicely. And it calls for a cup of milk, and that's about it for the sauce. And I measured out the milk here. The milk's going to go in last. When the butter, when you start to hear that, you know it's ready. There's no solid ingredients left. We'll turn the heat down to a very low simmer, and with a whip, a whisk, or a fork, stir in the powder. A little at a time. And it's going to thicken up on you. And then you're going to want to actually kill the heat altogether. 